How do we know the sun didn't really whiz around haphazardly that day, hmm? Well, number one, <laughs> use your frickin' brain. And Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response, I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of the hilarious Sam Onella Academy's videos on mass hysteria throughout history. Now, where have I seen mass hysteria before? Hmm. Let's check it out. Hey kids, if you've ever been Black Friday shopping or visited the Diablo <laughs> subreddit recently, chances are you've encountered mass hysteria oh, at some yeah. point. Mass hysteria is known medically as mass psychogenic illness, or MPI for short. It's basically just when a bunch of people start acting a fool for no discernible reason other than maybe a stressful environment. Being that Maybe that's it, because, I mean, as far as the anti-nuclear stuff, if you listen to the science behind it, the solutions we clearly have, for waste, our long-term storage, a safe, clean, reliable energy source. There's really not much in the way of uh, logical reasons for being anti-nuclear. By the way, if you support safe, clean, reliable nuclear energy, please join me on a journey to securing a clean nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much sort of thing is naturally very noticeable. There's loads of documented cases found all throughout history. Let's take a look at a few. This first one is what made me make this video in the first place. So one day sometime in the Middle Ages, a group of nuns in a French convent were enjoying a quiet, uneventful day, until one of them decided to start meowing. You know, like a cat. You'd think this would last all of four seconds before another nun was like, Excuse me, Sister Gertrude, would you kindly cut the shit? But instead, <laughs> another nun joined in, and another, until basically the entire nunnery was exchanging mouths like a wow. group of communist trading card enthusiasts. Is this where those guys in Super Troopers came up with that whole right meow gag? I've never heard of this mass hysteria event. <laughs> This wasn't just a one-time thing either, it basically became integrated into their way of life. It's said that on a given day, they would stand there meowing in each other's faces for hours at a time. Could you imagine being the first outsider to witness this? this you might crazy. laugh now, but as they say, everybody gangsta till the nuns start meowing. <laughs> I'd void my bowels and move to Malaysia without even thinking. Miles more terrifying than this pile of garbage. As you can imagine though, after a while it stopped being scary and just got annoying, leading to the neighbors calling in a band of soldiers to deal with the situation. Situation. Hey guys, can we talk to you for a sec about uh? Yeah, yeah that. that. Was scary. <laughs> uh, all due respect, but we have orders to literally beat the hell out of you with whips till you start acting like people again. Sorry, sir. It's just force of habit. Haha, <laughs> habit. Seriously though, we would rather go to hell for throttling a gaggle of nuns than put up with another minute of your bullshit, Caprese. Our next wow. event took place in the parish of Fatima, Portugal in the year 1917. It mm. all started with three shepherd children, ages 10, 9, and 7 respectively. That's uh, salamander juggling. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. They were like, greetings, fellow Portugueseites. Uh, we've been seeing visions of the Virgin Mary, and she told us to tell you that some real crazy shit's gonna go down in the sky on October 13th. Now, if three random farm children started spouting out prophecies to the public today, you'd say, ha, huh, what tomfoolery. Go play in some dirt, you dirty little dirt baby. But keep in mind, the past is a different country. And Portugal's a different country, so that's like different country squared you gotta think about. Plus Makes this sense was during World War One, a time where a <laughs> lot of people were holding out for a miracle to begin with. So the kid's story was actually picked up and even spread by local newspapers, to the wow. point where, when the day finally came, at least 30,000 people gathered in Fatima <laughs> to witness the alleged miracle. Lo and behold, on that- I love these little side annotations he's got here, they, they make the video even funnier. Day, the sun began zooming around, craning Whoa. towards Earth and sending rays of multicolored light cascading across the sky, creating a light show like nobody's ever seen. Keep in mind, this happened in the 20th century, way after the era where belief in divine jiggery and or pokery was considered <laughs> mandatory. So jiggery naturally, there were plenty of skeptics and non-believers present, and even they saw it all happen. Or so they thought. How do we know the sun didn't really whiz around haphazardly that day, hmm? Well, number one, use your frickin' brain. And number two, accounts differed wildly from person to person. While some say the sun That's zigged beautiful. hither, others say it zagged thither, mm. and others still said it shined a brilliant yellow and stayed perfectly still. As such, it- 
On the notes of the colors of the sun, part of it's just how we perceive it from Earth. I heard that like relative to other stars, the sun is actually more closer to like orange or green or something else than the yellow we experience on Earth. So this whole um, different colors, in this case, it's it's silly, but there there is a little bit of that, that kind of depending on your frame of reference, what the sun looks like, what the color is, that sort of thing. It's not as cut and dry as you might think. Eventually concluded that the event was just a combination of MPI and weird eye stuff from too much sun staring. Although I'd like to believe it was real, just that Jesus' illusion skill was way higher than his alteration at the time. Yep, that's it. Sam's going to hell. Why, for blasphemy? <laughs> Trust me, that was the least offensive part of that joke. Our next tale took place in 1962 in Tanganyika, which was basically just the beta version of Tanzania. The nation had just declared its independence from Britain the previous year, and with the future so uncertain, tensions were naturally running high around this time. One little girl in a Tanganyikan school ended up handling the stress in a bit of an unusual way. Rather than overeating or staring at her ceiling for hours like a normal person, she just yeah. started laughing and laughing and laughing. Pretty soon, her classmates wow. at the all-girls school she attended began to join in, to the point where 95 of the 159 students caught the gigglies, which... By the way, th these are all even crazier examples than the whole anti-nuclear thought of mass hysteria. Or are they? Are they both about as crazy? What do you think? ...lasted anywhere from a few hours to 16 days straight. Beyond just the unprovoked cackling, <laughs> other odd behavior included aimless running and such good animations. violence. The problem got so severe that the school was forced to close down temporarily, wow. leading to the chortlers roaming the streets, spreading the affliction further. Thousands I mean, a la it sounds funny, but this would also just be, be terrifying. I know that one, he did that little spooky thing with the nuns earlier, but yeah, um, it's one of those things that... I'm sure it would be funny for like a few minutes, but then when you realize what's going on, it would be terrifying to experience some of one of these events um, propping up. The people from all strata came to be affected, with 13 additional schools being shut down in the progress. Over the course of the hysteria, <laughs> several other symptoms began to present themselves as well, ranging from obvious ones such as breathing problems, fainting, random screaming, to more anomalous things like rashes. Despite all this, really? no physical cause could be wow. found, leaving MPI as the only explanation. The epidemic finally died down. I mean, on that note, I mean, if it's a, a mental thing, mental illnesses can manifest physically, so rash, um, other physical symptoms like digestive systems, irritable bowels. So yeah, I can, I can see that happening as a result of something that origins as, as a mental thing. That's, it's crazy. After between six and 18 months of day in day out laughter, depending on the village. While this whole thing likely sucked for most people involved, it probably could have been worse. A lot of the time when I'm alone, I'll think to myself, man, if I ever go full schizo, I hope I'm one of the laughy ones. <laughs> I had one instance of a visitor to a nuclear plant, not my nuclear plant, but this was discussed amongst, of someone it, that went into a radiological controlled area. Now that just means it's controlled. You go in there, you're not necessarily going to be exposed to um, dangerous levels of radiation or even any le levels of radiation depending on where you go, but it's controlled so you're required to have a brief with uh, radiation protection technicians prior to entry. And this one guest, um, he didn't get any dose, he was well monitored, you wear a dosimeter to see where you go, and they didn't go near any radioactive systems. and. He had this crazy psychosomatic reaction that he was getting sick, like stomach illness, based because he went into what is considered a radiation area, even though he did not receive any dose. And I wonder if there's, so there's, there's definitely some of this stuff going on, and that, that rash example that he mentioned earlier is, is not surprising to me, that... Um, various fears, uh, mental things can cause uh, physical responses. It's, it really is fascinating. Kind of like in the Matrix where they say your mind makes it real. One of the screamy ones. With this story in mind, just maybe, if I put my mind to it and believe hard enough, 
I can be both. Flashback to the year 1518 did the city of Strasbourg, at the time part of the HRE, a woman named Mrs. Trophy began fervently dancing in the streets for no discernible reason, for hours, <laughs> Love that days. animation. All without music, of course. Her only breaks consisted of occasional food intake and passing out from exhaustion when night came. If you saw that today, you'd just be like, huh. Drugs. But apparently people found it pretty inspiring, because within a week, 34 others had joined in, and after a month, there were around 400. This wasn't your casual wow. bobbing up and down, neither. This shit made Zumba look like Tai Chi. Earliest Here's crazy the best flash modern mob. day simulation I could find. <laughs> Now imagine that both of those people oh, were the man. same person, and you got the dancing plague. This would take a toll on any healthy person, let alone a medieval city dweller. But despite bleeding feet and aching bones, they just kept My going. Goodness. In fact, they went so hard for so long that a good portion straight up fucking died from cardiac arrest. It got to the point where around oh. 15 dancers were kicking the bucket every day before the city decided they had to do something about it. They managed to rule out any divine or supernatural causes, which was necessary just because, you know, back in medieval times, it was fucking stupid. They eventually <laughs> surmised that it was a natural <laughs> disease caused by too much hot blood as per that whole hot four humors juice. thing that was popular at the time. As for a cure, their prescription was, get this, more dancing. I can see where they were coming from. It's pretty sound logic. I'm surprised it wasn't bloodletting using leeches. Wasn't that a thing? Your your blood, your humor is not in order back then? Had a song stuck in your head, you play it till you're sick of it. Same kind of thing. But here's where they goofed. The authorities actually went out of their way to facilitate the dancing, setting up a big stage area and even hiring musicians to keep the afflicted moving. All this achieved wow. was attracting more passerby who were like, man, mass psychogenic illness looks frickin' epic, let's get in on that. Causing the contagion to become even more widespread. Seeing that their solution backfired, the city then went the other way and completely <laughs> banned any public dancing. Those who Maybe that's why they did what they did in Footloose. He heard about this story. I've, I've never heard of this one either showed signs of the mania were subsequently carted off to the Shrine of St. Vitus, where an exorcism-like ritual was performed on them. This ended up being highly effective, presumably for no other reason than that the dancers believed it would work, and after nearly two months, yep, the plague like was quelled. While this whole thing was most likely a case of good old-fashioned MPI, some historians believe it might have been egged on in part by ergotism, a state of psychosis brought on by eating tainted bread, which I talked a little bit about in this video. Ding. Wow, those were crazy. I mean, this... Mass hysteria stuff starts off, I mean, I, I cracked up on hearing the descriptions, but now it's kind of, it's more of a, a scary sort of thing, and with underlying uh, how these physiological symptoms can emerge from a psychological thing, and it can be crazy. I've never witnessed such an event. Let me know if you have. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.